Hi Floss 2. It's been a while. So we're going to do, we're going to check in on and say hi to all my commenters. I want to say hi to Leslie Hurley, Cheryl McCloy, Simunaya, Rachel Gordon, Sharon Bradshaw, Inez Harrell, Tia, I'm sorry, Pia Perita, Polly, from Old Dominion Stitcher, Elizabeth H., Ingeborg, A Stitch Too Far, Deb Wilson, Drusilla, Becky from Obsessed Stitcher, Nicole from Buckeye Stitcher. Hi, Nicole. Tamara Bowen. Kathy Ocasio. Connie G. Hi, Connie. Uh, Melissa Eagleston. Nancy Stitches. Pam from Pam Craft Craft Pam's Crafty Corner. Hi, Pam. Love you. Uh, Jan Hicks. Jan Hicks Creates. One Stitch at a Time, 46. Hi, Ruth. Jagita from the Magic Pond Crafts. Amy Loves Toads. Lori, Mischievous Stitcher, Stitches. Jane Hazeman. Arlene Cohen. Stacy Hours. Counting My Stitches. Julie, the Gulf, the Gulf Coast Stitcher. Mary, Liz Tedlock, Linda Craig, Stitchy Rebel, Christine, Every Stitch a Pleasure, Linda, Blue Horse Yellow Cow, who now makes videos. Hi, Linda. Belinda Z, Connie Christman. Where am I? Oh, C.W. Johnson. Frankie Easter. Hi, Frankie. Suzanne Pearl. P-R-O-U-L-X. Myra Beavers. Elizabeth from Vintage Stitches. Lori Walt. Tracy Thompson. Kathy Davis. Sharon Peterson. Angela Springett, Kaylin Francis, Robin from S S Sampler Bird, Colleen, Why Not Knit, Karen Macon, Lynn Burkhalter, Burkhalter, Caitlin in Stitches, Jan Tordillo, Abby, the Top Knot Stitcher, Hi, Abby. Diane Marisi. Linda Hininger. Angela Meyer. Senorita Stitches. Hi, Jill from Sim Swank. I love your garden. Andrea Strom. Janet Prather. Judy Stone. Joan Clark. Tony Stitches in Kentucky. Janet Murray, Star Sarazin, Connie Fulton, Louise Olick, Michelle Frank, France, hi Michelle, Gleza, made with glee, Sandy Burkos, Linda Bar Bazarski, Marlene, stitching by the lake, Love meeting you, Marlene. Samantha, stitching between, crafting between stitches. Samantha, that's my daughter's name. Stitching Witch Hazel. Crochet by Terry. Deborah Rodriguez. Kimberly, the distracted stitcher. Elise Deshanes. Desch Hope I'm pronouncing that right. And Sherry DeYoung. Hi to all my 
very, very beautiful commenters. The reason I'm still here. So I hope all of you are having a great morning. Hi, Floss Tubers. This, I'm, I'm sitting in a different spot in my room today. Um, I wanted to try something different. I'm using my new tripod, which seems to be working out fine. And I'm just sitting in a regular fold-out chair. Um, I don't have any, any notes or anything. And I may even have, I may even show you some stuff that I showed you in my last video. But I believe my last, it was such a long time ago, that was right after StitchCon. So, most of this is uh, what I've been doing and collecting and kitten, kitting up. And this is just what I've been doing since uh, StitchCon. So, let's see. I'll show you the biggest piece first. Um, I didn't take it off the, I didn't take the, the, um, scroll right I didn't unscrew the scroll right I hate to take it off but this is where I am now on my All Souls for Landon and hopefully you'll be able to see from this angle okay from here I hope you're able to see that that thread that floss is variegated it's hard to show up but this is my All Souls Verlanden. There's the alphabet, as you can see across the top. There's two rows with the alphabet. But these are the little motifs. And this is one of the big medallions that um, the first one I finished. So that's All Souls Verlanden. I do a little bit on this one. Um, cross stitch, uh, floss tube, itchy nose. What's with that? But anyway, I do a little bit on this one um, because it's all just one floss. So it's a, one of those where you just want to stitch and you don't want to have to sit and uh, change colors so often, you know, over and over. So that's just uh, one floss. It's a DMC variegated or one of their colorist threads. Uh, hold on a second. It is number 4245 and it's really nice it's a uh, blue with and it goes from dark blue to uh, dark burgundy purple okay uh, let's see some some more of my let's see more of my whips one second Let's see. Uh, new starts. This is my latest new start. I'm trying to see if I make sure I get it in the picture. This is my new latest new start. It's called the Rose Goddess. And it's from Joan Elliott. I'm stitching it on a 28 count white even weave. And I'm loving it. But I stopped because um, Jesse Marine is her her floss tube channel is turning five years old, which is very this is a that is to me that's a very good uh a big accomplishment so she's doing her own little celebration she does a, she's doing a five day stitch along and it's jesse marie does stuff turns five or jmd stuff turns five s turns five anyway um, so I stopped to um, participate in that and as a matter of fact this was this is what I used as my J project on the first day was because it's a Joan Elliott so that's for J and this is how much I've gotten done so far like I say, I'm loving 
that project because she is a beautiful and I, I did a, a skin conversion uh, I have someone else in the room with me and he just wants to play with my tripod so if we get to trembling a little bit that's smoky uh, I'll see if he'll come up and do a cameo visit. But right now he's just laying out on the floor and he wants to play with my tripod. So what I was saying was my favorite colors to use as um, for skin conversions right now are 3862, 3863, and 3864. They, and these are the, those are the three shades that I've used. Most of the time um, I found that when you're when you're stitching charts with with faces you know and the, and the ladies or whatever they if it's a large picture they have three shades for the skin you know so um, you go three shades which in your conversion and normally if, they, if it's a smaller picture, they may have two colors. Then I use the lighter two and use it that way. Um, but those are my, my go-to colors for my skin conversions. Uh, let me see. What did I work on yesterday? I have my stuff stacked here, but it's in no specific order. I just have it stacked and actually it's sliding around and <clears throat> let's see, did I bring my other? Yeah. I think I did. No, I didn't. Oh, here they are. See what I mean? I've got stuff everywhere and I've got this little table here. I don't have my, my big work table to put everything on. So Jesse Marie does stuff. So on yesterday was for the M. And I worked on this chart. Crinkle, crinkle. Little star. Anyway. I worked on this one. It's Heartstring Samplery. M is for Mermaid. So this is my M. And I started it. I only, I only had like, had, I didn't even, I don't think I had any of her tail, maybe a couple scales down here, and she didn't have a tail, and a couple of the fish here were missing, the vine was gone, so this is where I got yesterday. I took a picture before I started, so I'll put that in here. Here. And like I said, this is what I have, this is where I am now. So, um, that was for M. And today is D Day. And I am running late today, getting started with everything that's, I had to wait for my camera to charge up some so my battery wouldn't run out because we had quite a bit to go through. So anyway, that is, um, was my J, uh, M. Today, I plan on... Working on... Okay. I'm back. Silly me. It was right here. Anyway. Where do you go? Oh, let's see. Here. Um, okay. For today, which would be D, I have pulled this one out. This is my Dorothy, Dorothy's Discovery. And I'll be working on that one. I already put it in my, let's see, I put it in my Q-snap, I 
I can take this this one side off and be, and I can show you where I am. I've got all of the left hand side finished. The only thing I have left actually is Dorothy's legs and her skirt. I have a little bit more of the yellow brick road down here that isn't finished. Smoke is now in the window. I had to open up the blinds again so he could look out. But now he's in the window and he's playing with the cords for the blinds. As I was saying, this is, I have a little bit more of the yellow brick road to finish here. And her leg and her skirt and this will be finished. I'm not in any hurry to do them to fit to finish it um, but that's what I picked out today to work on for uh, the D in Jessie Marie's stitch along. So once I get that uh, this video edited upload and starting to upload I'll work on that okay um, I don't plan ahead as far as um, you know that far ahead as to what I was going to work on I just after I decided I was going to I, my my rose was the uh, J I just went in my in my whips grabbed something for yesterday Last night, after I posted it on Instagram, grabbed something for today. So, um, there's tomorrow will be the S, and then Thursday, yeah, Thursday will be a free day. You can pick, pick anything you want to. I may work on uh, All Souls for Landon, or I even may go back to my. Um, uh, Rose Goddess. Okay. Um, I want to show you my whips. I'm not sure, I'm not completely sure if I had shown this one in my last video. But I worked on, I did work on, I think I worked on this after I came back from StitchCon. This is uh, Silver Creek Samplers and it's called um, it's called see oh seeds of seeds of freedom duh it's at the bottom of the chart yeah this is called seeds of freedom and this is where I am with this one. Now I'll do a close one so you can see it all. Yeah, this is where I am. I have another verse. I have this bottom verse to go. And that will be finished. There are several people who, who who have done this. I'm stitching this on a 28 count um, even weave Lugana, not Lugana, uh, Monaco that I bought. Um, I think this came out of the tube from Michaels, and I had coffee and tea dyed it. This is one of the ones that I had coffee and tea dyed using Vana's instructions of course what, what else she's the she's she is my finishing guru and her instructions are phenomenal speaking of Vana and her instructions I had made well I'm gonna show you this bag I was given as a gift by um, Samara 
one of the ladies that I stitched with at the Fairfax County Library. And she made these bags. And this one, she, ma she made these uh, using Vanna's uh, instructions, video, and tutorial. And this is gorgeous. I love it. I do. I love this so much. It's so beautiful. And it has the white inside, but the fabric and the fabric is, is, uh, is amazing. This is the back of it. The front. It has the fastener. Okay. Now, I love these bags. I love them. I get, as a matter of fact, she gave me two. And I, I think I've shown them before. This is another one that she made with the fastener. Isn't that beautiful fabric on the inside? Oh, I love them. The only thing with these bags, and I actually made one myself. It doesn't have, I didn't put a fastener on it, but this is the fabric on the inside of it. Now, I made this bag myself. I love it. It was so easy following Vanna's uh, tutorial. But those bags, you can't see through them. I have been using Ziploc, as you can see, for years. And I've been happy with them, but of course, everybody is doing floss, uh, project bags, fabric from, uh fabric project bags and they're so beautiful and I wanted some too now I think I showed you this one or I showed it on um, Instagram but I didn't go into quite how it's done but this bag okay this bag has a vinyl front a vinyl front see and it's made, I started out using it with Vanna's um, in tutorial, how to make this kind of fabric bag, right? And like I said, the only part that I just had to change because I'm so used to having the clear see-through, you know, plastic bags, I wanted to add the vinyl. And the ones with the zipper in them, I, uh, they're gorgeous. But they're so, to me, they're so complicated. I don't think I could actually make any of those. To, I made one that was so wonky. It, it, I'm using it, but <laughs> I wouldn't want to show it anymore. But this one I'm, I'm very proud of. Because I figured out I didn't want the seams to show. I didn't want um, raw edges, raw seams inside the bag because it's see-through, right? So I had to figure out how to uh, have the front bag, the front of the bag clear, vinyl, and also hide the raw edges. So, let me tell you another little thing about this bag. It's reversible. Right now you can see that, okay, I've used the pre-quilted fabric for this side. And then one side is just a beautiful fabric. Now you can use this as the liner or you can use this as inside. Let me show you what I've done. Very easy to do. You can reverse it. And put the lining on the inside and the quilted side on the outside how I had originally done it to make it 
like this and this would be the lining and as you can see this is the lining now and this is the inside of the bed so what I did was I will put the written instructions in my blog so go to all X's which is my same as my channel at blogspot.com uh, is it I'll put it below my brain's not functioning but anyway this is the project bags that I've made and I figured out how like I said to hide the the, the seams the raw edges and still have the vinyl front they don't call for as much fabric as you would need for the regular envelope project bag because this is this part is vinyl so you can start out like you can use her instructions I actually made vinyl bag and sent her a copy of my instructions and I, I sent her, I made her a bag just like this one so she could see it and not so much well I wanted to share it with her uh, since I had taken her instructions and her idea you know for the bags and not imp I don't well it's not an improvement it's a enhancement we're going to say enhancement and like I say I enhanced it because now it has a clear front okay but what I did was I took my piece of well we'll leave it like this here I had the lining and I put the vinyl well once I I decided to put the, the, the lining fabric and made a hem across the front. That way you don't have this raw vinyl here and it matches your inside of your bag. So you take your vinyl, like I said, you start out with the instructions for this bag. Instead of making the full length of the bag, you know, the fabric, like with this all the way out, you can cut off however high you want to put your vinyl you can cut it here your fabric so it's only this long that's your fabric so you take that and the portion of the fabric that you would have put in the front for the front edge you cut a piece of vinyl clear vinyl that size that will meet the edges the same you know with a cross as your bag then you take your lining fabric and you make a strip fold it up uh, two and a half inch strip fold it in half and then fold those halves down to do the hem and you stitch it on you go slowly because your vinyl is slippery I use the sewing clips that Vana uses and uh, they work fine because they'll hold and you don't poke holes with your pins so you put those together you sew your, you sew your vinyl edge on and then you take your vinyl and you put that between your, your, your outer fabric and your lining you put them together and then you put your lining on top that's when you stitch around all the way around and in with these bags you start at the bottom edge and you go all the way around when you fold it up well you go you stitch those across first and then you fold it all the way up here and you start from this end and stitch all the way up and across well with this bag you can't start at the bottom because you don't want to leave this open so what I did was I stitched across once you have all three layers sandwiched with the plastic the vinyl in the middle you go ahead and stitch across the bottom right 
So then once you have that done, then you can stitch around the edges and you start at the top. You start at the fold, at the flap. And that way, and you, you can leave as big of space as you want to. And you start and you sew around this edge and you sew all the way down the side on this side and then all the way down on this side and back up around that corner to here and you leave the top portion open that what that's where you reach down inside and you turn everything out now like I said you can turn it out to either where the your lining fabric is the lining and your vinyl is here on this side and that completes your bag. Or you can turn it out with the other side as I had it at first as your lining. So it's reversible. Either way you can do it either way. But your vinyls on the will be on the front. And when you put your let's see. When you put your project in it, you put your project in it and you're ready to go or ready to store it. There you go. You got your project in there, you've got your beautiful fabric bag with your lining and and you can see what's in it before you open it without opening. So, once I've practiced making more bags, I may do a tutorial. Like I say, the written tutorial um, is in my blog, and I'll have that link below. If you'd like to go and get the written instructions, that's fine. Um, I am not selling these bags. I'm not making them to sell. Uh, like Vana, I just wanted to share my enhancement to her beautiful bag um, to anyone who would like to have that style of bag with a clear front. So, there we go. Okay, I have some more, uh, I have some finishes from, that I, that I've actually stitched and finished since StitchCon. Uh, I finished during early part of July, during, um, when everyone was stitching Patriotic, I also had a Patriotic finish. This one is Four Freedoms. I believe Connie G finished this one also. I had started this last year, I believe, and I did the house first. I did the house. The very first thing I did was the house because it was so much, um, such a big area to stitch with one color. That's a variegated flaw, so I think it's blue jean, I believe it is. I'm not sure right now. I did a little skin conversion on the lady. Seeing as how we're talking about four freedoms, and this is me. Um, anyway, did the skin conversion. Now, the house, as I remember, was quite a bit of stitching. But going back when I was working on this to finish it up, this basket, oh, I thought it would never end. It's actually not variegated. There's two separate colors in there. So you stitch one row in one color, and then the next row in another color. Okay, those little 
The blackbirds are variegated. So this was my July, early July patriotic stitching finish. I had another finish. Um, I started this one quite a while ago, and it was originally a stitch along with. It was supposed to be with um, McKenna and Michelle Bendy Stitchy. I don't know if they fin. Well, um, McKenna didn't get to hers, and Michelle. I think Michelle finished her. I'm not sure if Michelle finished hers or not. But anyway. Mademoiselle Rose is finished. I you, normally I don't like doing borders. <laughs> I hate doing borders, but this one I did, and it actually matched up the first go round. So I'm very proud that I actually did the border, and I didn't have to pick it out a couple times before I finished it. So that's a finish. And I hadn't intended to stitch the whole thing and finish this one, but I started it and I just could not put it down. It was so fun to stitch. This is, um, let's see. hold on one second. It's from the 2013 Joan Elliott Stitcher's Diary, which is. This little book came with one of the cross stitch, uh, World of Cross Stitching um, magazines, and it's a, it's a calendar. And this one I, that I stitched is, I believe that was July. Okay, which one was it? I told you it's going to be a while. And it's called Fairy Dreams. And here's my version. Fairy Dreams. Like I said, I started, I picked it up, I started it, and I just loved the, the way it was coming out, the colors. So, I just kept working on it. It took me a few days, and I just kept working on it until it was done. So that's another finish. I have a which I have I have some things here that I had kitted up and because these I want to start sometime in the near near future and Pam if you watch Pam from I can't, I'm so sorry, I can't, I can't remember your channel. But, she and I have the same, uh, the same affliction. We love kidding up charts, whether we're going to stitch them right away or not, but just the, the excitement of, you know, having a new chart and going through your threads to see if you have all of the threads you need or what threads you would need. Picking out fabric. And I kitted up. I have a bin and a bag full of uh, projects that I kitted up ready to start. And I think I went through that those once before. So, we won't talk about that, but I have some additions to that bag and bin. Again, this one is another one from the Joan Elliott, and it's a witch. This is for October. 
I think that is very cute. And it's not very big. Let's see. The size for it is... Well, I think all of them in this, uh, yeah, all of them in this uh, booklet are uh, the stitches, hmm, 66 by 66. So they're they're small, like like this one. But the next one, like I say, I will be stitching. I have I have it kitted up. I mean, it's, it it only uses two colors black and orange and I've got plenty of white Monaco to stitch it on so that's kitted up it's kitted up and ready to go very soon I'm starting uh, let's see I've got some more that I have started to kit up and some of them you may have seen already but I just you again. This one is from an Etsy store. This is www.stitchcraft at info. Um, this is Ann Logan. It's called Eyes. I love it. I just love it. And I've got the floss. There's only two flosses in it. There's a gray floss for 15 and black and I'm sure I could probably knock this out in a day maybe but I love that and it's it's semi kitted because I don't have the fabric in it this one is McKenna got me in trouble with this one bubble bubble This one I get from an Etsy store. It's uh, from Good Flora Stitch Work. I have my flosses. The stitch size, let's see, the count is 47 by 95, so it's not a very big piece either, so it won't take long. And I've got plenty of floss. I can grab a piece and work on that one. This one I ordered on from an Etsy store. Rovaris. Rovaris. 13 Days of Halloween. I love it. I think this was a this is a new one that I've purchased. And it only calls for black and orange the orange I don't have I have plenty of black so that's no problem um, I won't take it out of the bag but this is reverse I will put down I will link the Etsy store below okay that's another one I love Halloween as you can tell this one I get at the on from the markdown bin at, in stitches I didn't pay eleven dollars for it. But this is Needle Bling Designs. Trick or treat. It only has three colors. A black, an orange, and the pukey green number one sixty-five. And I think I changed, let's see, please, okay, the skin color is, I'm going to use the orange, the green, I'm sorry, I'm going to use that for the skin color of my witches. So, I have that one. Um, this is another one that I got in the markdown bin at... In stitches and it's called Hive and Home in Shepherd's Bush. Really like that. 
you can do the three little charts you can either do them separately as little pills or you can put them all together like that one. it has a house in the middle it says hive and home with a little bee skip I learned a new word a bee skip because I was just calling it a beehive and then you've got one that's a bigger skip and then a whole little garden and I like that I'm not that crazy about well I'm not over the top about the bees and I've never been stung but I don't want to experience it either but I like this this one is very nice they're small so you can put them in make little pills out of them very nice I may go ahead and do those during the winter so I have them in spring and can put them in my bowl <laughs> that's a good idea okay the next one this one I get I found on the freebie table at SitchCon. You've probably seen it before. This is just Nan. Angelique. And I've got all my flosses, so I'm ready. The only thing I haven't got is the beads. There are two. I may have the I may already have them in my stash because I've got some beads. So, I just haven't chose my fabric, but it looks like she's stitched on, it doesn't say, but it looks like she's stitched on an off-white linen, so I have some, I can find some. Uh, another one I get off the freebie table. It is the alphabet from Lavender and Lace. Enchanted alphabet, yes, from Lavender and Lace. I love that. I think that is so pretty. I, I, and I love collecting the lavender and lace charts, the old one, the old lavender and lace. They're beautiful. I mean, I I don't have anything against Mirabilia and the Nor the the you know Nor Nora Corbett, but her mother charts are just so they're just classical and I love them. And I I haven't stitched any of the uh, lavender and lace yet. That will be the first one I think I tr I'll try. Because, why not? This one, yeah, this was another one that I found on the freebie table. It's in the Garden of My Heart from Elizabeth's Designs. And it has specialty stitches. And I'm just, oh, I'm dying to get to that one. I love doing specialty stitches and I do have all my flaws I have all my flosses ready and I have fabric in my bed or bin that I haven't pulled out yet but that's partially kitted up this one is a okay I bought this at keepsakes during stitch kind and it's fairy wool in the wood mermaid and sailor and of course you know how I am with mermaids so this one is all kitted up it's ready to go I've got I've even got my fabric in there so I'm ready to go with this one may be my next new start since it's complete with the fabric already in the bag so oh, yes and you like I said you know me and mermaids as I told Sue Hillis at StitchCon when I grow up I want to be a mermaid so this one is Serena from Lila Studios I ordered that one 
Well, I picked this up at um, in stitches last uh, last uh, stitch night, and I'm not sure about the fabric yet. I want to get a fabric is close to this. Let's see what is this is Alchemy by Picture This Plus. So actually tomorrow Wednesday is stitch night again at in stitches. So I may take this one with me to see if I can find that fabric. Because haha I have floss. Well I'm doing the DMC conversions. I'm going to do it all in DMC. I have lots of DMC fair um, floss, and I have a Michaels that's within walking distance that will take me all of ten minutes to walk there. So. I love and, and DMC is fine with me. There's not a lot of big chunks of you know space in here. Even her body. Now her body is stitched with two different colors of floss anyway. So and there's not that big of a space that I would you know that would show a lot of variegation anyway. So. DMC is fine and I love it. Uh, like I said, I may look for that fabric. Um, wow. I'm almost done. I have a I have the 2018 Special Collectors issue of Just Cross Stitch Halloween. If you haven't got this magazine yet, you need to hurry and get one. It has some of the best uh, charts. And as you can see on my little tabs here, I have went through and looked at all of them. Isn't that cat? Gorgeous. I love that cat. Love it. Here's another picture. Love, love, love it. Okay. Um, I'm sure Danielle will probably do a, another flip through, but this one is mine. I want to show you. I love this. This old house. <laughs> Uh, you have to look close to find the there's a railing falling down over here there's steps missing uh, the shutters falling off so this would make remember the old fix the fixer upper show this old house they've got some shingles missing part of the roof part of the chimney oh yeah this old house. I think it was with uh, who? Bob Vila. Bob Vila would have a good time repairing this old house. Okay. This one. This is another one I have picked out. It's that little pillow there. Halloween. I think that's cute. This is a um, what's the name of them? This is Batty ba uh, Bakery from the Frosted Pumpkin. Well, that, uh, let's see. This one, first let me tell you who that one's by. Um, Halloween is uh, Simona Busiagli. But I like that. That's cute. Okay. This one is, like I said, from the Frosted Pumpkin. Isn't that cute? Yeah. That's cute. 
Uh, let's see. The next one is Deborah Dick, Time Slipping Away. I think that's cute. It's a little clock. Kind of like melting. That's a cute one. Oh, and I love this one. Halloween, hello. This is by Nicolette of Nikki's Creations. That's a good one. That's cute. Love that one. Now, of course I like this one. And this is by Ursula Michaels. Oh, Ursula Michael. Sorry. And it's called Boo Juice. And that's how you make Boo Juice. That is so cute. I love this one. It's by Elizabeth Spurlock of Saving Grace Fine Needle Arts. These are cup cozies. Magic Beans and Witch's Brew. Love them. Love those. The next one is, like I said, this is a great magazine. They have some great ch uh, charts in this one. This is so cute. Wicked Ride. Leslie Tear. That's a cute one. I'm telling you, it's just, and then this one is Ghoul Bus. The Magic Ghoul Bus by Nancy Greenberg of Pickle Barrel Designs. I thought when I saw this one, I thought about the little magic school bus that my daughter, the kids used to watch when they were small. Here's one. It's a uh, boo and like the B and O Railroad, this is the Boo and O Railroad. <laughs> Love that one. Ah, oh, this this book is fantastic. It's well worth the price you pay for it because, I mean, it's so many designs in it. This one is the Ghost Jerry, or Jerry the Ghost. Tanya Centurelli. That's cute. That is so cute. Oh my goodness. That... Okay, you like long videos. What can I say? And here is Nancy Greenberg again from Pickle Barrel Designs. Hocus Pocus. Isn't she cute? This one. With the Mirabilia um, cards. Here is the Jack Jack O'Halloween. <laughs> Isn't that cute? It's a Jack. A Jack of Spades. Oh. Uh, and this, this is gorgeous. Now, it's beautiful, I love it. But that's, full, that's almost like full coverage. And I think every year they've had one. This is by Syrah Cancel, cross-stitch adaptation of Elizabeth Spurlock. 
think this is a better picture you can get though. Oh, but isn't that gorgeous? Look at the colors on that. Look at those eyes. That's gorgeous. Really gorgeous. This is a good one. This is Lee Fisher of Fishy Stitch Designs. Night Song Silhouette. I like that. That's cute. Easy to stitch. This is The Perfect Witch by Natalie Luvi Luniva. <laughs> They're getting ready to go out on town. Putting on that corset. So they can look good. So you'd be the perfect witch. And this one. Sleep tight. This is by Linda Medina. It's very simple. It's a poem. I'll read it to you. Now lay me down to sleep. Ghosts and goblins were quite a treat. But now it's time to say goodnight. The magic fades with the morning light. Halloween spirits are always near. Though the celebration must wait for another year. Isn't that cute? Okay, so. That's the last one. But I thought they were beautiful. I, I, this, is, this page here shows a picture of some of the other ones that I didn't highlight. But they're all great. They're all great charts. Have a sweet and scary Halloween. That's cute. But if you haven't got this magazine yet, you need to. And just, I don't know. I, I have them. I forget them. They're on the other side of the room, but I'm not going to get them right now. But. Don't forget to go to Stony Creek website. They have a freebie every month. They have seasonal uh, charts that they, that they you only you only pay for shipping, three ninety five. And it started out. This is the first one, then the second one, and the third. And this will be the one for August. Starts tomorrow, free for the month. You can stitch them individually, or you can make a bill pool. Love them. Like I say, I have um, the one from this year. I'm getting the one from this year. I think I have the one from last year. So try check out Stony Creek. Love them. Okay, so. One thing we haven't done is had a visit from Smokey. Smokey! You want to have a visit? You want to say hi? Come here. Come on. Where are you? Come on. Come here. There we go. Oh. Okay. Oh. There is my fat boy. Smokey. Say hi. Say hi, Mama. Oh, look at there. Look at there. Yeah. Say hi. Look. Look, you on the camera. Look at that. Okay. There you go. All right. So. Me and the big boy would like to say happy stitching. Thank you for sitting through all of this. I'm not going to make a promise as to when I'll be back. But I will be back. And thank you for watching. If you're new, 
thank you for watching me. If you're uh, already a subscriber, thanks for coming back and hanging in there and waiting on me to make another video. So until we see it, meet again, stitch all the X's, and I'll see you later. Bye.